right? So hi, everyone. A very warm welcome to all the kids, the parents, the mentor, Rajan sir, everyone. A very warm welcome to all of you from the Olympiad Success family. So uh, children, as you all know, today we have gathered here for a demo and interaction program for uh, science Olympiad preparation. And this is in particular for uh, grade six students. OK, and uh, the flow of this session would be uh, like, first of all, there would be an introduction by your mentor, Usha ma'am. Then uh, Rajan sir would be giving you a short presentation. After the presentation, I would be taking you uh, through our Olympiad Success Platform. So I will be giving you a small tour of your dashboard. Like once you enroll to our classes, what all you would be getting, I will be showing you on our Olympiad Success Platform. And uh, after that, we will be having a short question and answer round. Okay, so in case of any doubts and queries, you can write it down in the chat section and we would be happy to answer all your queries post the question and answer round we will be starting with the demo session for which you all are here right and uh, kids you understand like uh, olympiad success has been into olympiads preparation for quite many years like it's been almost uh, six plus years that we have been into uh, olympiads preparation and uh, uh, like uh, these live classes we had started uh, three years back. So basically, this is our third year with live classes and the trust which the students and the parents are keeping in us, uh, it really encourages us to do more and uh, the kind of re uh, results which the students are getting. And uh, I know Olympiad success, uh, like Olympiad success with the help of Olympiad success, but then you, your mentor and your parents, they play a very important role because uh, these three are the important pillars, right? You yourself, your mentor who would be coaching you and your parents who would be guiding you, right? So all these three are uh, really important pillars. And along with that, uh, your Olympiad success preparation, uh, we had many uh, international rank holders uh, for the academic year 2021. So we had almost 40 plus international rank ones. And um, which uh, like really makes us proud. And uh, this is, you know, like, uh, as I was mentioning about the students, your effort you put in, and so is about our mentors. So uh, we have, you know, like uh, those mentors who really put in a lot of effort and they try to uh, make the students understand each and every concept very nicely, very clearly. They are here to lay your foundation very, you know, strong so that you are ready to face the uh, challenges for your further competitive examinations. And today also we have a wonderful mentor, Dr. Usha. So she has been uh, like, she has a very, very good experience. She would be giving you an intro right away. So uh, over to you, Usha, ma'am. Thank you so much, Arti. First of all, I love today's demo because I see so many nice, bright faces. And really, it's a, it's, it's really cheer, cheers me up and motivates me also. So as Arti has rightly said, I would like to extend a hearty gratitude and thankful to the parents because children of class six, you are really very small. So parents play a very important role in your lives now. All your decisions are taken by your parents. So thank you so much to the parents for motivating and for you know encouraging your children. That's very important. And to tell you a little bit about myself, I am Dr. Usha Banerjee. I have a PhD in computer science and I'm into teaching for the past 20 years. And thanks to Olympiad success, last year was brilliant. I interacted with almost more than 100 students of class six. And I'm sure many of them must be getting, must have got real good grades in the Olympiads. And it was really an eye opener for me too. And I like children who are interactive. I don't like muted children. So in my class, everybody will be unmuted and everybody will ask questions. So, you know, my classes are really very interactive. And um, normally I try to answer all questions which are asked by students, irrespective of syllabus or grade also. Because this is the time when there's a lot of curiosity, right? And I encourage that. So definitely, you know, during the course of the Olympiad preparation, the Olympiad exam is one level above your school or the NCRT or whichever board you are in. So definitely I'll put in 100% of effort and I expect approximately 75% from you and your parents also. And together I'm sure we'll make a great team. Thank you so much for being there today. 
Thank you so much, Usha, ma'am. It's a pleasure to have you on the platform as well. And uh, so, kids, now we will be starting with the presentation by Rajan, sir. So after that, uh, there would be a tour of Olympiad Success Platform. And after that, we will be having a question and answer round. So over to uh, Rajan, sir. Yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so students, uh, my screen is visible. You can show the thumb if you can see the screen. OK, yes, OK, sir, then. Now nice. It is so firstly, students, welcome to the demo of class six science. OK, let me tell you about us, about Olympiad Success. So Olympiad Success is India's largest online preparation platform for Olympiad, Olympiad exam. We have Olympiad live classes. This is our third year in live classes. And again, it is India's first exclusive live classes for Olympiad preparation. We have School Plus program. In School Plus program, we offer eight courses, mathematics, science, English, logical reasoning, communication, in communication spoken and written both Vedic maths and coding. We have online CBSE classes for grade six to 12. We offer one-on-one -on -one preparation classes for International Mathematics Olympiad, like SESMO, that is Singapore and Asian Maths Olympiad, CMO, Southeast Asian Mathematics Olympiad, Hong Kong International Mathematics Olympiad, Thailand International Mathematics Olympiad, Math Count, US Mathematics Olympiad, Math Kangaroo, PRMO, and also J main preparation classes. Now meet our rank holder for session 2021. For session 21, 22, we are actually compiling the result and we will release soon. So in different, different Olympiad exams, these are students of Olympiad success who got rank. So we got 40 plus international rank one, 70 plus top five international rank, and 120 plus top 10 international rank in various Olympiad exams. Now about the session. So about this batch, there will be 20 students in a batch. And the classes will be conducted on Zoom platform. The session will be two sessions per week. Days are Tuesday and Friday. Timing will be 6.30 p.m. to 7.45 p.m. So the session duration is 75 minutes and there will be a break of five minutes in between. Okay. So the session include mix of theory, practice question, doubt session. And we will also discuss previous year paper. Student will get reading material, practice question on Olympiad Sakashpur. And student will get a free access to Olympiad Success Platform of uh, practice topic wise mock test of both science and reasoning, logical reasoning. Now, the fees for this course is 10,620, and the course duration is 50 sessions. The link I will share in the chat box. So, the fee includes online classes, daily reading notes and exercise, practice of previous year paper, and also access of mock test for science and logical reasoning. And students, if you enroll today, you will get free Crest Science Olympiad data so exam. What you need to join this course, a uh, laptop with good internet speed, and if possible, headphone. So students, uh, as you know that Olympiad exams are quite tougher than your school curriculum because there are some topics from your upper grade also. So students, uh, we always advise that uh, you require some more hours to cope up with the curriculum. And again, parent support will be needed to check answer and retreat concepts. So the classes for this course will start from 29th March. So currently we have students from 3,800 plus school and we are catering in 35 plus countries. So this is about this course students. Now, if you have any doubt or any question, uh, you can ask in the chat box. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Rajan sir, for a detailed presentation. And uh, kids, as uh, Rajan sir was telling you about the uh, like what all inclusions uh, will be there once you enroll for this program. So I would like to quickly uh, take you through the Olympiad Success Platform for a quick tour. Okay, so uh, just a moment, I'll share my screen. Okay, so kids, can you see my screen now? Is it visible? Uh, it is presenting. Yes, it's visible, ma'am. Okay, great. So kids, what you have to do is like, uh, you need to go to this link, olympiadsuccess.com slash login. Okay, once you on, like once you are uh, enrolled with us, so you would be provided with the credentials. Okay, so uh, let's say like I just log in with one credential. So once I log in here, okay, so this is, this would be your profile. So there are two important things uh, like 
which rajan sir had mentioned about it so first is the live classes so you need to go to the live classes okay and uh, here like what all subjects you have subscribed to so we uh, provide training for math science english logical reasoning these are for your olympiads preparation and then we have communication which has both spoken written vedic mathematics and python programming okay so this is coding so for uh, grade 6 to 8 we provide python programming okay so let's say like if i go to science olympiad because i have enrolled for science batch i have to select the topic so let's say sorting and separation would be taught in your class so here uh, once you click on sorting and separation reading material so here you can uh, find the reading material so this would be provided this would be available on your dashboard okay so the reading material then the practice questions which uh, rajan sir was mentioning so once you, once you click on practice questions this uh, pdf would open up and here you would be getting lots many uh, uh, practice questions so like uh, out of the following which is not defined as a matter you have to you know select the correct answer and then like if you would want to check your uh, answers so you have to click on the answer keys and you can compare your answers like whatever you had answered is visible here or not okay so like uh, if you had answered uh, b so it means that you are correct okay so this is the first thing which you would be getting and second is the worksheets okay so the topic wise worksheets which rajan sir had mentioned so uh, like science for science uh here as you can see so we give you topic wise worksheets and uh, there are 77 worksheets which would be provided to you so these are in the type of exams in the format of exams okay so you have to click on the take exam button you have to uh, appear for the exam so let's say i click on the start worksheet button i read the question i uh, select the options and i click on the next buttons and then finally i finish the exam so uh, my exam is finished and finally i'll get the uh, the review report okay so here you can see like uh, what the question is what the options are what the correct answer is and what you had answered okay so the entire report comes over here so you can check this report on your performance tab as well so here like once you click on the view button and under detailed result column so once you click on the view button your uh, summary would come up like how many questions you had attempted not attempted and once you click on the review button you are again like the entire worksheet opens up okay so these are the two important things under live classes and uh, the worksheets these two things we are providing to the students if they enroll to these classes okay along with the live classes which your mentor would be giving in understood everyone so now if you have any doubts queries please do write it down in the in the chat section and we will be happy to answer those and after that we will be starting with the demo session so quickly kids come on let your questions pour in uh, ati ma'am we already have some questions uh, the okay, question great. Uh, now i am in grade 6 so i will group get 7 so shall i watch this or not yeah okay so i had actually replied him personally also so basically i have shared him uh, the batch details page so what you can do is like uh, if you wish you can attend but then you know like you are in grade 7 so it's better you can attend uh, you should attend the grade 7 demo and uh, that would be beneficial for you all right how much classes in 10 6 20 okay so there will be 50 sessions There is okay, one question, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, are the NSO Grade Five results out? No, I believe SOF has not declared it yet. Only uh, IEO and IGKO results are out. I think so. So NSO is still pending because on their website I cannot see. Uh, like they have result, they have declared the result. So SOF. Once is worksheet and what called second one that is under live classes. uh okay so basically there are live classes one section one section is live classes the other is worksheet and below worksheet there is the performance tab wherein you can see your performance of any test which you had given okay how many days in a week so the classes will be two days in a week and the other question is also how many months will the session be please do the math <laughs> how many months the session will be for how many months come on kids quickly 
if i miss one class how will it be compensated okay so uh, if you miss the classes so first of all we uh, recommend the kids not to miss any single class because uh, what you get to learn in the live classes in your group is uh, far better uh, than learning through you know recorded videos and all so although like for all our live sessions we would be providing you the recorded videos but then we do recommend the kids not to miss any single class because uh, as mentioned earlier also so you should you know uh, not miss the classes because the learning in class is far better than seeing the recorded videos okay during the summer break you gave some vacation time or without any break <laughs> <laughs> i am so sorry girik like uh, the course uh, so the duration and everything is fixed okay so there would be two classes so there would be no break in the summer uh, holidays also okay so if there are two classes per week in your summer holidays as well so there would be two classes we won't be giving you any break but then yes for any holidays coming in like uh, holi is coming in so for the color day we would be if any batch if any batch is running on that day like we don't uh, conduct any classes on public holidays okay apart from that the classes would be conducted uh, do anyone have any other question okay so nisha and vaidya he had come up with the answer for the total number of months i am depending on this course so that i don't lose the habit of studying during my holidays okay <laughs> that's nice how many hours are each class so each class duration is 75 minutes will it run for more than 6 months come on kids you are in grade 6 now so you should do the math so two classes in a week so eight classes in a month right and there are total 50 sessions so just do the division and you will come to the answer so few kids had already answered in the chat section right do we have any, any other, other question Okay, so now kids are coming up with the answers, right answers. <laughs> okay, Girik. So to your question, uh, like, uh, so this for like all our courses and for this particular course also. So uh, there are fifty sessions for this course. Okay, so your mentor would try to complete the course in let's say forty two, forty three sessions, and the remaining sessions would be uh, exclusively kept for doubt sessions, solving of previous year papers. okay so these practice would be there but apart from that after every topic there would be mock tests conducted okay so there would be lots and lots of practice lots and lots of tests so we would want an equal effort from your side as well to you know uh, do those tests regularly and do not miss any one of them first the fee for the full course so <laughs> it is 10620 inr yes do any other question or shall we start with the session any further questions coming up so the month question is clear right yes it is 50 classes and the total months would be if anyone is not clear 8 six are 48 and plus 2 so 6 months plus 1 week right clear so those who have answered 6 months 1 month they are right uh, sorry 6 months 1 week they are right okay so i think ma'am we can start with the demo absolutely yeah yeah so uh, i'll take over from here it was uh, there's another question from manpreet manpreet kaur regarding the fees yes mantrit the uh, absolutely for one subject the cost is 10620 this is for science olympiad only but then like uh, we have already mentioned what all would be covered once you enroll for this program okay okay, okay usha ma'am yeah you yeah. can begin thank you so much rajan and arti 
I think I'll start off with the uh, demo class. And today I have around uh, 40, 45 minutes, and which is really less time for me to do anything substantial. But yeah, I'll try my best to give you a feel of how the actual classes are held. Okay. So just give me a minute. I'll just share my screen. So I have taken the first chapter of your syllabus, which is sorting materials into groups, okay? So what the way I teach is, I, I focus on strengthening your concepts, the foundation. So the first concept here is what is matter? I'm going to the whiteboard. So the first concept here is what is matter? Right, so matter is anything which basically occupies space. Now, when I mean space in scientific terms, I will say that matter occupies volume and that is matter, okay? And there is a physical existence of matter. So we can perceive matter. Perceive means I can see or smell or touch or feel. All this is regarding matter, right? So normally in my class, you know, I uh, uh, children are not on mute. And I also allow annotations because I have handled many, many batches of class six kids. So children normally ask questions on the slide also, on the numerical also. We have a lot of numericals in the class. So I allow annotations also. Today is a demo class with a bigger group. So total we are 36 participants in the meeting. So that's the reason the annotation is off. But in the real life classes, annotations will also be allowed. Until date, I have never faced any kind of anybody creating any confusion or you know uh, mischief in the class. So the classes are that engrossing. I try to give a break of five minutes in the class, but usually there's so much of things to cover. So two to three minutes break is good enough, right? So first we cover the concept of matter. So matter is anything which occupies space, which has volume and there is a physical existence, we can perceive it. So whenever I talk of matter, the next thing, I, and this is the syllabus that we'll cover, absolutely right, Hamza. So the, the, the next thing which I will show you is the syllabus that we will cover. So this is, these are all the you know, topics that we will cover as part of this lesson. And normally in the live class, this takes about two to three classes. So today, uh, this is just a trailer of the movie. So I'll try to cover as maximum possible content in 40, 45 minutes, right? So I give a lot of examples. I take examples from real life and I encourage the kids also to give examples. So I spoke about matter and Hamza rightly, you know, she texted in the chat group that matter is anything that occupies space and has weight. Now I will not talk about the concept of weight now because what you know as weight is not actually correct. So Hamsa, to correct you, instead of weight, use the word mass, okay? So now, because you know, and I allow a lot of questions in my class, I don't restrict it to the presentation or the PPT, no. So because Hamsa told, uh, you know, mentioned mass, so mass is nothing but the amount of matter contained or present in a body. And when I mean body, it can be an object also. So when Hamsa said weight, I told her don't use the word weight, we'll use the word mass instead. And mass is a property of matter. Property of matter means it remains constant wherever you are. So for example, I tell you that my mass is 75 kilos, right? So that 75 kilos remains constant whether I am on the earth, whether I am in moon, whether I am in Neptune, Pluto or Mars or Jupiter, right? And why did I tell Hamsa not to mention the word weight here? Because weight, absolutely correct Nisha, so weight is a different concept altogether. Weight is actually a force which depends on the acceleration due to gravity. 
So weight depends on the planet that you are present in. So if my weight, yes, if my weight on earth is 75 kilos, my weight on the moon, so let's say weight on the earth is, suppose I'm giving my example, I am really fat. So weight on the earth is 75 kilos. So weight on the moon will be 1.6 into 75. Absolutely correct, Adhiraj, right? So basically the gravity, the force of gravity depends, is a parameter for calculating weight, right, Chirantar? Okay, so whenever we talk about matter, we will use the term mass. So matter is anything that takes up volume, it has space and it has mass. So if you notice here, I have mentioned mass and volume. Now, I, I'm, I really you know, find it difficult to read all the chat messages. Okay, Ashia is saying she could not understand. So Ashia, mass is the property of matter, whereas weight depends upon the acceleration of the force of gravity. So if you are on Earth, your weight will be something. If you are on Mars, your weight will be something else. If you are on the moon, your weight will be something else, right? So it depends upon the planet or the location of where you are. So that is the reason, that is the difference between mass and weight. Good, Ashia. I'll try my best to answer all your questions and explain it in as simple terms as I can in this time limit, okay? Now, if you notice, I have written a sentence here. So I am using a, you know, iPad here. This is matter. I'm using a stylus matter. I am matter. I'm sitting on a chair. That's matter. I have a bottle of water in front of me. It's matter. Can you name two or three things which are not matter? So anything which doesn't, you can type it in the check text box, fire and color. Very good. All your emotions, time, light, correct. All your emotions, pain, laughter, sadness, all of this is not matter. A rainbow in the sky, even this is not matter. Truth, yeah. So whatever does not have any volume and does not have any mass is not matter. So this, now if you can ask me, you know, in class six, children start to differentiate what is physics and what is chemistry. So if you ask me, is this chapter physics or chemistry? Now, you know, in science, there is a lot of overlap. So yes, theoretically speaking, this is a chapter of chemistry, but then the concept of matter pertains to physics also. So there is a lot of, you know, overlap between physics and chemistry. So all of that we will discuss in details when we go about with the life classes, right? So you understood the difference between matter and things which are not matter. I can see a question, is light matter or not matter, right? So to give you, to answer that question, light and heat are not matter, right? Why? Because they do not have any volume and they do not have any mass, okay? So I'll try to answer all the questions that come up in the chat window. Okay, so we are talking about sorting materials into groups. First of all, why do I need to study this? Ask questions, okay, that is the best way to learn. You know, always ask questions, okay. Electricity is not matter. Cloud is not matter. Outer space is not matter. So the reason why we sort or substances or sort things is that it becomes easier for us to handle. So all the children in this meeting are of class six. So all of you are of a particular age plus minus. All of you have the same mental ability. So when I teach this class, it becomes easier for me to handle this class. So therefore the reason why we sort materials into groups is that we want to be able to categorize them. We want to study their properties. We want to study how they behave. And therefore we classify or group materials into these categories. For example, if I tell you, can you name two things which are made up of wood? So immediately all of you will say that, you know, uh, wood is, uh, a table is wood, a bed is wood, a chair is wood, etc. You will have n number of examples, right? So the reason why we classify matter is that 
because we want to sort and study the properties of a particular group, right? And I can see questions of is cloud matter and is water matter? First of all, cloud is not matter, that's correct. And cloud is not exactly gas, it's water vapor. We'll talk about all that in details when we do the class. Pencil is made up of wood, right? So the reason why we categorize different objects is that it makes our life easier. So all, suppose in this class, I had you know 30 children of class six and two of class 10. Imagine my pain, right? The class 10 children will say, my God, what is this so low level? And if I teach class 10 level, the class six children will complain, right? So it becomes easy for us to study the properties to handle that particular group, right? So basically, here, look at this example here. So we are very concerned about what is the material with which substances are made. We will try to classify materials into different categories. For example, if I talk about jewelry, immediately I know all the girls in the group will say that, yeah, gold and silver, they are shiny materials, right? As soon as I talk about utensils at home, 90% of us in India will tell, yeah, we use steel utensils. Okay, so just like that, we are very concerned with why, you know, wh wh what is the material of particular matter? So we will basically try to understand the different categories of materials, and we will also try to put them or sort them into groups, right? Now, to, I, I can see a lot of questions on why cloud is not a matter. So just to answer that question, cloud, is a, cloud consists of two different phases. It consists of liquid phase and also it consists of water vapor. So cloud is what we call in science, it is colloid. So technically speaking, cloud is matter. So when we study the phases or the, you know, the states of matter, we'll be doing all this in details. But this is just a brief explanation, right? So cloud contains a mixture of solids and liquids. So yes, and the liquid is water and the solids are actually ice because there is condensation. So cloud is matter, right? There are lots of examples given in this uh, you know, sl picture, slide, desk, chair, books. I'm sure all of you, you know, I don't like to read through slides. So you can see the pictures here. So what we have done is we have just put pictures of commonly, you know, things that you use, rubber, eraser, color pencils, all and so forth. So no, cloud is matter. Cloud is matter. Somebody said gas, gas is not, right? So basically we are trying to group materials around us. So why do we need to group objects? Grouping, first of all, you know, makes our life easier. So first of all, why are we studying science? First of all, why are we studying science? Why are we doing all this? Why are we studying science? Because we want to understand how things work. Number one, we want to understand how things work. And also we want to make life easy. And it has. Now you have got remotes for television, air conditioner, right? So that makes your life easy. And that is just an application of science. And number three is we want to solve problems of daily life. So tomorrow there will be a device wherein, you know, I, I make a cake here and I send it to you in, you know, in a Zoom meeting and you get it. So that also, that technology will also come, right? So science, we are studying science because we want to understand how things work. We want to make life easier. We want to solve problems of day-to-day -day life. So definitely the reason why we are grouping objects is we want to store them into similar categories. We want to study the properties of substances. Right. So now many of you are asking questions about things here. Transparent, though I'll cover it later, but because you are asking, coming to transparent. Okay. So I'll talk about each of these. These are categories of substances. So transparent, a plastic sheet is transparent. A cellophane paper is transparent. A piece of glass, you know, a glass window in my house is transparent, right? Absolutely right, Puneet. Simple scissors is, a, you know, it's a marvel of science, actually. Even a knife, 
the knife with which your mother cuts vegetables, there is science there, right? There is a, you know, technique of how the knife has been built. Okay, the, the word rigid means hard. For example, the table on which I'm sitting, no matter how hard I press, I cannot bend it. I cannot break it also until I really jump on it real hard. So the word rigid means how hard a substance is. Bendy means, you know, suppose you have a piece of rubber. So if you just bend it like this, the shape changes. Your pillow or your cushion is soft and definitely a stone is hard. So these are just examples to show you how do we classify and how do we group materials into different categories. Absolutely like Girik. That is a property of elasticity. Okay, Mehika, to answer your question, paper is opaque. So when I talk about translucent, I talked, I spoke, I spoke about transparent. So transparent means I can see through fully, right? And the example I gave was glass or I gave was cellophane paper. The second category is translucent. The example for translucent, translucent means that I cannot see fully. So I can see through it partially, means not completely. The best example is frosted glass. So if frosted glass means glass through which, you know, there are small dots. Also, the next example is butter paper. Right. And the third category is opaque. So it's, you cannot, cannot see through it. For example, paper is opaque. I'm talking about normal paper, not any, you know, special category of paper. A block of wood is opaque, a steel plate is opaque, so laptop is opaque, so on and so forth. Right. Okay, so that is the, so we'll talk about all this in details, just have some patience. You know, I'll, yeah, we'll talk about all these categories. So basically we group materials based upon the material of construction. So what is that object made of? Whether it's made of glass or steel or wool or leather. Uh, in most places in India now, it's slowly, you know, summer is coming in. So I think most of us are wearing cotton clothes. So cotton is also a material. In winter, we wore woolen clothes. That is also a material. Classification. So the re purpose of classification is that we want to group substances into specific categories and we will study the properties of that category. Properties means shape, size, material, what are the uses, whether they can be bent or not, how easily they can be broken. So if I talk about say example wood, okay. I saw many of you gave examples of chair, table, then pencil, bed, sofa, so, you know, these are all substances or ob objects made of wood, right? So generally, wood has a lot of strength and wood is rigid. Rigid means hard. It cannot be broken easily. Now, you can ask me, okay, you're saying wood is hard, but what about a pencil? I take a pencil and I break it. A pencil is a narrow piece of wood, right? So it depends if house is also made up of wood. Okay. So, uh, okay. No, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. You can note the, uh, see, uh, Ashia, right? Ashia, uh, don't worry. The recorded class will be available to you. I'm sure it's on Facebook also. So you can see it later for the demo class. You know, I don't, if you want, you can note it. But uh, noting is not really necessary for the demo class. Because once you join the live classes, we'll do all this in a lot of details, not like this. So we'll spend a lot of time. You have to understand the properties of solids also. Solids, liquid, gases, so on and so forth, right? So depending upon the structure of the particular object, whether it can be broken or not, even that depends on it. 
So you cannot break a wooden sofa, but you can easily break a wooden pencil, right? And the, and the basis of grouping is typically the properties are appearance. Appearance means how does it look? What does that mean? So gold and silver are shiny, okay? And in physics, shiny physics and chemistry, shiny means luster. So luster is the correct word that we will use in science. Luster means shiny. So gold and silver have luster. Copper has luster. In fact, all metals have luster. Aluminium has luster. Steel is an alloy. Steel also has luster. Wood doesn't have luster. Mercury is a metal. Mercury has luster. So on and so forth, right? Next is solubility. If I talk about simple things that you use at home, salt and sugar. So we know that salt and sugar dissolve in water. To make lemonade, you take a glass of water, you add lemon juice and you add a spoon of uh, sugar, right? And you mix the sugar, right? So basically that is solubility. So we'll group materials on the basis of appearance, solubility, transparency, conductivity. Now conductivity, I'm just going to the whiteboard. Conductivity here has two, you know, subcategories. One is how conductive it is for heat. So if you notice in our kitchens, we have copper bottom pans, right? So the bottom of a frying pan or a kadhai is made up of copper. Why? Because copper is a good conductor of heat. And the second kind of conductivity we will be studying about is electrical conductivity. So we have a chapter on electricity in which we'll be doing details of it. But here in this lesson, the emphasis is that we will group substances on the basis of conductivity also. So generally I can write Metals are good conductors. Somebody mentioned mercury a while ago, okay? Now mercury has a brilliant property. Mercury is a liquid metal at room temperature. Can you tell me where mercury is used? Very common at home. Anybody where mercury is used at home? Absolutely correct, Ishan. And everybody else also, those who have messaged in the chat window. So we recently, you know, came out of the pandemic. I'm sure everybody how, everybody's house has a thermometer. So mercury is used in a thermometer. And you know why mercury is used? Because mercury is a very, very good conductor. I'll answer your question, Nisha. So mercury is a very, very good conductor of heat. So if you have fever, your mother puts the thermometer under your arm or in your mouth and immediately the mercury rises. So that is the because mercury is a good conductor of heat, therefore mercury is used in a thermometer. So the temperature rises very, very fast. Okay, Nisha's question was, why do metals have luster? So metals have luster because that is a property, inherent property of substances which are metals. So all you know, elements of nature are cat. This is not a part of class six content, but as I said, I encourage questions. So all the elements which are present in nature are part of something called the periodic table. You will study this in class eight, right? So yeah, so that's the reason and I'll answer all the questions. So metals belong to a particular category of elements present in the periodic table, which have luster. That is a property of metals, which are present all of them in the periodic table. Puneet, I'll answer your question. Definitely this is not connected to the lesson, but I'll answer how digital thermometers check temperature. So digital thermometers, they do not have mercury. They have what we call as a temperature sensor. So a digital thermometer is actually an electronic device.
So it has a temperature sensor which runs on battery, correct? So the temperature sensor that detects the temperature and the figure is displayed on a screen like here. So something, so 99.7 degree Celsius, it just comes up on the screen. It's something like this to give you a rough drawing. So there's no thermometer. It works on a different principle. It works on the concept of a temperature sensor. Okay. Okay. Even I have a digital thermometer at all. Right. Okay. And definitely behavior towards magnet. What is a magnet? We all know, right? A magnet is a substance which attracts another substance towards itself. And in your class six course, you have one chapter on magnetism also, right? Where does mercury come from? Mercury is a mineral. It's an element which comes from the earth's crust. Absolutely correct, Girik. Fun with magnets is the name of the chapter. And trust me, we'll have a lot of fun there. <laughs> okay, now coming to the physical properties of matter. Now, my question, what does this word physical mean? What is physical? What does the word physical mean is my question. So physical means anything that I can measure. So anything that, uh, Nitasha, physical exercises, okay. I need that, I need to do that. But in this context, physical properties of matter, physical means anything that can be measured, right? So physical properties, which means that in physics and chemistry, there are ways in which you can measure hardness, softness, smoothness, roughness, rigidity, shiny, dull, all of these can be measured. So all of these are what we call measurable quantities. You know, something that we do in science very you know, often, we try to quantify everything. Quantify means convert it into a numerical or a mathematical value. I'll give you a small example to explain it. I tell you, I am fat. I switch off my video so you can't see my face, okay? And then I tell you, I am fat. You don't know, right, what is the, when I say I'm fat, whether I'm 75 kilos or 90 kilos or 60 kilos or 120 kilos. As soon as I say that my weight is 75 kilos, then you have an idea in your mind, oh my God, she's fat. And if I say my weight is 100 kilos, all of you will be like, oh my God, she's very, very fat. So it becomes easier for us to understand things when we quantify them. Quantify means convert it into a mathematically measurable quantity. So we, you know, for, we, it, is, it, is, it becomes easier for us to understand and explain things. I tell you that the temperature of where I'm staying is 25 degree now. Somebody is staying possibly in Rajasthan where it's 30 degree. So we know that where she's staying at 35 degrees is more hotter than where I'm staying. So it becomes very easy to compare things. I am 46 years old and you are nine years old. So immediately you can say, oh my God, 46 minus nine, which means she's 37 years elder to me. You're 11 years old, whatever. I just, I'm just giving you examples. So it becomes easy for us to compare things when we quantify or you know, numerically we measure them. Yeah, so all of you are really little children in front of me, right? These are other physical properties and we'll do each one of them in details, okay? So we'll talk about in the, in the live classes, we'll do it in details, we'll talk about each and we'll talk about the properties. Say for here, it's just in a box, light can pass. So in the class, I'll explain how light really passes through a transparent object and light cannot pass through an opaque object. Whereas in the third category, which was, which is the translucent category, a little bit of light passes through and a little bit of light is stopped, right? So we'll do all of this, this in details. Could you tell me the difference between metal and iron? 
uh, Adiraj. Adiraj, no, there is absolutely no difference. Just to answer your question, iron is a metal. It's chemical. If you want me to tell you about iron, its chemical symbol is Fe. And it is a very, very important metal. Why? Because we cannot imagine life without iron. All our construction, buildings, bridges, trains, buses, everything, the base is iron. The stainless steel utensils that we use at home, even they are alloys of iron. And iron is obtained from ores, from nature. So you can actually mine, mine iron from ores. Just to answer your question, as in, you know, in, li in, in little time that I can get. Okay, so iron is a metal, right? That was not, uh, you know, in, in the, so is metals a group? Yes. It's okay, uh, Nitasha, you can ask your question. I will definitely try to answer. Uh, I'll, I'll try to answer all your questions. So we'll talk about solubility. So we'll talk about what is a solute, what is a solvent. Now, usually children tell me that solute is solid. So if I talk about a solution of salt and water, 90% will tell me salt is a solute, water is a solvent, and the salt water, glass of salt water is a solution. But not all solutions are, you know, uh, not always the solute is a salt. So can you tell me examples of a solution which has, which is liquid plus liquid or a solution with two solids. Oil and water is not a solution. Alcohol and water, okay. And two solid solution is alloys. Milk and water, definitely liquid. So we'll talk about all these cases when we do the class. I'll talk about alloys. I will give you the commonly occurring alloys and all that, right? Yeah, def all of you are correct. Honey and water, paint and petrol, glycerin, water, absolutely right. And a solution of two solids are alloys. Do you have in your session, do you have actual questions? Yeah, yes. See, what, I, what we do is that, Nisha, by, we finish the entire syllabus by maximum by class number 42, 43. And the remaining seven classes, that a total number of classes is 50, right? The remaining seven classes that I get, I usually end up doing seven to eight full Olympiad papers. Each and every question with tips and tricks of how to solve. There are some questions which will take half a minute. There are some questions which will take one second to tell the correct answer. And there are some questions which will take five minutes. So definitely you have to use your intelligence and wisely answer the question, right? So definitely we'll do all that when we solve the papers together. <clears throat> okay, we talk about flotation. What substances can float on water and what will sink? And why do substances float in water and why some sink? So if I, if I give you a plastic ball, immediately all of you will say, Riyansh will say, that the plastic ball will float on water. If I give you a piece of iron, you will say the iron ball will sink in water. When does a substance float in water and why does a substance sink, substance or, or, or object sink in water? So there, there, are, there is a logic from which you can you know, identify which not by mass, by which you can identify, yes, Drishya, the right word is density. So if density of the object is greater than density of the liquid, then the object will sink, else it will float. And what is density? What is density? 
mass by volume is density. Okay. Yeah, Asia, no. A heavy log can float. There, there is a, the spelling of density is S-I-D-E-N-S-I-T-Y. Asia, to answer your question, a heavy log floats on water because of a different reason. Okay, because the force exerted by the log is lesser than the weight of the log. So that brings to a very important concept of Archimedes' principle, which we'll cover in the class. Yes, and for the same reason, an iron nail sinks in water, whereas an iron ship floats, right? We'll talk about all this when we do the actual class. Now, I told you all metals have luster. Most metals have luster. The word is luster and the verb is lustrous. So I say gold is lustrous. Lustrous means shine. Now, you know the Statue of Liberty? No, after this introduction test, there is introduction class, there is no test. The Statue of Liberty is actually made up of copper. The color of copper, it is a bright red color. But now if you open pictures, yes, Adiraj, it's in New York. Now, if you see the Statue of Liberty, it has become a light green in color. What has happened? Green or gray. So what has happened? So basically the copper has got oxidized and there's a chemical reaction. The copper has got oxidized into copper oxide. So most because of pollution, <coughs> not fungus, because of oxidation. So the statue, the copper statue has reacted with oxygen to form copper oxide. Uh, you know, if you have worn silver jewelry, silver earrings and all that, or your mother has, after a few days, you will see the silver has become black. Why? Because the silver has oxidized into silver oxide and the color changes to black. So normally metals undergo these reactions because of which they lose their luster. Okay. Now you can ask me a question. Why is gold always shiny? Yes, Girik because gold is the most non-reactive or unreactive element. The reaction of gold is practically zero. Gold only reacts with one, no, it is not because of purest. It is because gold is the most non-reactive or unreactive element. Gold only dissolves in one substance. I'll tell you that in the class later. That will take time. Now coming to hardness, so as soon as I take cotton or your pillow or your cushion, you say it's soft, some substances are hard. And you know, questions from the Olympiads come on hardness or softness where you have to literally put in your brains. It's not like this, a ball of cotton and a piece of gold. Gold will ever lose its luster. Gold does not inherently have any reaction. But after some years, many, many years, gold loses its luster because dirt in the atmosphere settles on the gold dust. We live in a very polluted atmosphere, right? So the dust settles on the gold. So if you clean up the gold with simple soap and water, it should become clean. It has no reaction with oxygen, right? So as I told you, objects that can sink and float definitely depends upon density. And once you understand the concept, as I told you, why doesn't iron, uh, what about acid? Gold does not react with any particular acid because all of you are asking questions. So gold dissolves. So gold dissolves in a substance which is known as aqua regia and aqua regia is nothing but a solution of concentrated sulfuric acid and concentrated nitric acid. So gold reacts or dissolves only in one particular substance in chemistry, that mixture or solution is called aqua regia. 
okay gold cannot react with there's no other reaction of gold and aqua regia is nothing but a solution of concentrated sulfuric acid and concentrated nitric acid so when you give your gold jewelry to the jeweler to clean he actually washes it with aqua regia so that is the reason you are not even lava so that is the reason your grandmothers might be telling you that don't give gold jewelry to the jeweler to wash and clean because he will you know clean it with aqua regia so there is a chance of a little gold being lost and gold is precious so we don't want to lose it okay so that is the reason why i didn't understand about the aqua regia sorry so aqua regia nitasha is a mixture of concentrated sulfuric acid and concentrated nitric acid that is the only substance which reacts with gold nothing else does right so don't worry when we do the regular classes you know we'll do all this in details you know i'll tell you how it works also so the reason why an iron nail sinks a floats in water whereas a ship made of iron floats in water because the ship displaces an a larger amount of water a uh, giric aqua regia is not expensive actually it is not very expensive with the problem is it is very very corrosive it's dangerous you burn your hands right so the reason why a ship floats on water is because we will we'll do that when we talk about you know up thrust and buoyancy so usually i take one class to explain this concept so because the ship displaces a larger amount of water the body of the ship is hollow and therefore that amount of water the ship displaces and therefore the ship floats on water a coin displaces less water and therefore the coin sinks in water right and so with an iron nail right and who discovered buoyancy or up thrust a very famous scientist known as archimedes and that is not resort law that is archimedes's principle right okay how it floats with people in it yes so if there are people on the ship the total volume of water displaced by the ship with the people is greater than the volume of water and therefore it floats okay so this is the concept of buoyancy so basically for buoy buoyancy means what buoyancy means there is an upward force so whenever a suppose i take a bucket of water okay so this is a bucket of water i put a any object in the water there are two forces acting on it one is the weight of this object acting downwards and the other is what we call as the up thrust or buoyant force correct correct absolutely correct absolutely correct shushruta bhattacharya very good right so these two forces act on a body right so if the weight of the body is greater than the buoyancy the body will sink else it will float so this is the concept of buoyancy and this is the concept which we take a lot of time in the class right and these are properties of fluids now i'm asking a question does this apply to only liquids no it applies to gases also so i'm talking about fluids a fluid can be both a gas or a liquid okay so definitely this is a very important concept yeah when an iceberg is made no when an iceberg is made what you see on the tip of the iceberg is actually a very very small part of the iceberg you know that normal physics is that 1/10th of the iceberg is what you see on top and remaining nine parts of the iceberg is under the water right we can freeze carbon dioxide by simply reducing the temperature and the pressure we can freeze any gas not only carbon dioxide we can freeze oxygen nitrogen carbon dioxide helium 
any gas by reducing the temperature and pressure, right? So this is an example of transparent, translucent and opaque. Okay, in this lesson, we also talk about the states of matter. It is very difficult to cover the states of matter in five minutes. So Shreyans, I'll talk about why ice floats on water because there is a property of ice. There is a property of water, the structure of ice. That is the reason ice floats on water. So we normally, uh, you know, in norm, when I ask anybody, the, immediately the child says solid, liquid, and gas. But actually, there are five states of matter, starting from the Bose-Einstein condensate to plasma. So Bose-Einstein condensate, if you notice here, is the lowest temperature state of matter, and plasma is the highest temperature state of matter. So the question is then, why do we talk about only these three? Because these three are the most commonly occurring states of matter. Therefore, usually when I ask children, they say solid, liquid, and gas, because these three are most commonly occurring. So we'll talk about you know, Bose-Einstein condensate details, plasma, what is plasma, how it is made, and all that in the class. But yeah, we'll be dealing with each of these states of matter in details. We'll also talk about the method in which we can change solid to liquid, liquid to gas, gas to plasma and back, right? So solid to liquid we know is melting, liquid to gas is evaporation or vaporization, gas, solid to gas is sublimation. So we'll talk about each of these, what we call phase changes. So to change, you know, the essence of this is temperature, heat. So if you notice in this diagram at every stage you have add energy. And here the energy that we are talking about is heat energy, right? So we'll talk about, you know, this is very difficult to explain in two or three minutes. So we'll talk about each of these processes in details in the class. To give you a small idea, Melting is a process which requires heat. Vaporization requires heat. Ionization requires heat. Sublimation requires heat. And I'm coloring in blue. Deposition requires removal of heat or cooling. Freezing requires cooling. Condensation is cooling and recombination is cooling. Right, so we'll talk about each of these processes, how it happens. What is melting point? What is boiling point? What is the difference between boiling and evaporation? There is a lot of, you know, chemistry and physics here, right? So we'll cover it in a lot of details. In this lesson, we also co covered the concept of mixture, element, compound. So what is matter? Broadly, matter can be divided into mixture and pure substance. And if you notice, please look at this, you know, arrow here. This arrow here is very, very important. So element is the purest form of matter and heterogeneous mixture. I always give enthalpy is energy, Nisha. Okay, heterogeneous mixture is a packet of gems. All of you know gems, right? The Cadbury is gems. So the easiest example is gems. So you can see the red color gems, blue color gems, yellow color gems clearly. So you can separate all the components very easily. Homogeneous mixture means milk and water. You cannot separate components easily, right? So we'll talk about all these. We'll talk about the properties of mixtures, how to separate mixtures. There are, there's a lot of things. This, this lesson normally takes five to six classes. We'll talk about solutions. Gems is impure. Yes, it is a heterogeneous mixture. We'll talk about solubility, how to separate soluble substances. When we talk about two liquids, we use the term not solubility, but miscibility. Why do we eat? Impure means not dirty. Impure means it contains different components. The word impure here is different. Impure means not, you know, dirty means it has different components. So you've red color gems, blue color gems, yellow color gems. So when, when we're talking about two liquids, soluble or insoluble in each other, 
we call it miscible or immiscible. And then definitely we do a lot of questions. This is just a sample, okay? I'm looking at the time and thinking I have one more minute. So after every class, we do questions. After every class, you're given a worksheet. You solve the worksheet. I come to the class and we discuss the worksheet. After every lesson ends, we have a test. You do the test and I discuss the test in the class. And apart from that, loads of questions, you know, definitely, you know, every class has. Now, this is a very interesting question. Oxygen is soluble in water. And that is the reason we have so much of aquatic life. So we have fishes and all the, you know, aquatic animals. We have aquatic plants. So I'll explain all of this in details as to how aquatic plants and animals survive. Even if the sea is frozen, animals underneath can survive. And that is the beauty of nature. I'm run, running out of time. So I will just want to wind up here. Thank you so much for being attentive. Uh, Nitasha, I don't think in jazz they put anything which makes us addictive. So any questions, I'm just stopping the screen share and I want to see your faces. Any questions, I'm open. I think I've answered all the questions in the chat window. Any other questions? Yes, Girik, you have to type it in the chat window. Okay, I saw the question. Do we study elements or anything in this course? You don't have the elements in class six. You basically have the elements, detailed elements only in class eight. In seven, you have a little bit. In class six, you don't have the elements. So if you're asking me, are elements a part of the class six course? The answer is no. But yes, when we teach, we, when we talk about photosynthesis, okay. I'll be talking about carbon dioxide, water, and how they react. So if it's there in your book, I'll cover. But yeah, as a part of the Olympiad success, we don't have a chapter of elements. The number of elements is 118. But we don't have a separate chapter of Olympiad as part of the course. So I think, Rajan, I think that's all for today. Periodic yes. table room time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful session, ma'am. Uh, students, uh, please let me know in the chat box how was the session. No, there won't be a worksheet after this class. This was just, you know, interactive kind of class where you get to know how the live classes will be held. You don't have a test after the class, no. Okay. It was great. I like it. Great, definitely. Okay, okay. Very interesting. Thank what you. What is frosted so glass, Girik? Frosted glass is glass through usually bathroom windows. So we cannot see through bathroom windows clearly, right? Oh my God, Chirantan has given me one with uh, so many zeros. Thank you, Chirantan. I, I never got so many marks in my exams also. Thank you. So students, uh, now uh, Usha ma'am will meet you in the live classes. So live classes will start from 29th March. Okay. So in the chat box, I have shared one message. So you can save this link. Okay, somewhere. So to register for the course, you can use this link. So thank you, Isha ma'am, for the session today, for a great session. Thank you, Ati ma'am. Thank you, kids. Now we will thank meet you. you in the live classes. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. And have a nice day. Bye. Thank you Bye, so everyone. much, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night.